All right, Nate Review, Chapter 1, Soft Skills. Let's get ready to do some math. Now, the lesson objectives for soft skills are defining soft skills, communication, math, judgment, ethics, and people skills. Communications, judgment, ethics, and people skills are pretty much common sense questions. You should be able to answer those without any type of review or study. It's the math that's going to uh, trip you up if you're not ready to go when it comes to the Nate Core exam. The math should be a no-brainer, and if you practice just a little bit and get familiar with the calculator, this should be uh, pretty easy for you to pass. So, as a technician, you need to know your basic math skills, and I'm sure that you do, and you pro we probably all do them like me on our iPhones or, or iPads or mobile, some type of mobile device, So, you, but you have to use a calculator, so it's a pretty good idea to practice with it. Now, Nate provides you with uh, several formulas for the test, and you need to know how to enter those numbers into the calculator that you have. Now, they're all different, so you need to get familiar with them. Here is the Nate math formula page. Quite a few formulas. If you have not practiced this and taken a look at this before, and then you get a question and you're going to be hunting for all your formulas here on the math page. So, But we're going to go through the ones that are pertinent to the core exam. Now before you go into the Nate core exam you should be able to calculate percentages as far as discounts and markups go. And the temperature conversions, they are from Celsius to Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit to Celsius they don't give you that formula on the Nate exam, so you have to commit these to memory and know how to to do these formulas. So just make sure that you know these and, and you don't have to have to scramble when it's time for the Nate exam. Again, all Nate tests have a formula page. The key is is knowing which formula to use and how to work the formula and use your calculator. So the first thing you must know: volume. Now, volume is defined as the amount of space occupied by a three-dimensional object as measured in cubic units. Now, when we're talking about volume in HVAC, we're usually talking about a room and the air in this room. So the volume formula is length times width times height expressed in cubic feet. So now's a good time to pause the video, get your calculator out, get some paper and pencil. We're going to be working some formulas together, and then you're going to have a chance to work some on your own. So what is the volume of a room that is 25 feet long, 14 feet wide, with 9 feet foot ceilings? So the answer is 25 feet times 14 feet times 8, or 2,800 cubic feet. Pretty simple. All right, so what is the volume of a room that is 50 feet long, 25 feet wide, with 12 foot ceilings? Now it's your turn, so pause the video and work it out. The answer is 15,000 cubic feet. Next question. Now this is one where you're going to you're going to see on the exam. It asks, what's the volume? of a building that is 1,600 square feet and has 8 foot ceilings. Now remember the formula was length times width times height. Here they've already done your length and width formulas. You just have to multiply 1,600 times 8. I gave that answer away, but you're going to see this. So sometimes they're going to have part of the formula completed for you. The answer is 12,800 cubic feet. Okay, so area, this is when they're referring to duct work. Sometimes in some of the questions are going to ask you the cross-sectional area of the duct work. And don't get confused when it says cross-sectional. They're only talking about, just remember this word right here, area. Don't get thrown off by the cross-sectional part. So when we're talking about a cross-sectional area, we're talking about rectangular duct. So area equals width times height. 
Now when we're talking about round duct, here is where you need to know your formulas and how to work your calculator. Now the formula for a round, the round duct is the is right here on your Nate formula page. And that formula is area equals pi times radius squared. Again, here it is on your here it is on your Nate formula page. So first of all, what is pi? Pi is a mathematical constant. We're not going to go into how that who and how and determined what pi is for the Nate exam we are going to use only 3.141 we'll forget about all these extra uh, decimal digits for our formulas all right so when we're talking about um, the area of a round metal duct the first thing you need to understand is the radius and that's depicted here in this e example the radius is the distance from the very center of your round duct to the outer edge of your round duct so for example if this was a 14 inch metal duct what would the radius be that radius would be seven inches so remember in the exam they're going to ask about the area or cross-sectional area of a 14 inch round duct you're going to have to remember that the radius for the formula is only half of the 14 inches so that's not a formula that's on the formula page you just need to know that so what is the cross-sectional area of an 8 inch round metal duct so the first thing you need to remember is 8 inch round metal duct means it's 8 inches in diameter so that gives it a radius of 4 inches then you start to plug this into your formula so the area equals pi times the radius squared so the area equals pi which is 3.141 that's another thing you're gonna to have to memorize for the Nate exam times the area which is 4 squared now if you remember from math class when we were talking about squaring a number it is that number multiplied by itself so this would be 4 times 4 and if it was a if this digit here was 6 it would be 6 times 6 so the area equals 3.141 times 16 or the area equals 50 square inches now it's your turn what's the cross-sectional area of a 14 inch round metal duct pause the video and work your problem the answer is 154 square inches what is the area of a 14 by 20 inch square metal duct the answer is 280 square inches all right so we have had more than enough math for now we're about halfway through the math portion of the Nate course course so I will see you on our next video